All right, folks, in this video, we're gonna show you how you can tape your dog's ears up, whether it's a Dogo Argentino, a Cane Corso, a Pit Bull, a Presa Canaria, a Doberman, or any other breed that you might need to tape their ears up after cropping to make sure they don't flop left, right, inwards, outwards. And this is Mr. Achilles here, four-month-old Cane Corso. He's gonna be our little model for today. I'm gonna to show you all the little tips and secrets that we use to bang these out fast and easy without too much fight, no trouble, and get those ears that you've always wanted. Let's do it. Before we get started, let me tell you what tools you need. Cotton balls or paper towels, something to wipe up the excess alcohol. We love rubbing alcohol. Backer rod, you get this at the hardware store in the insulation section. And this is about um, maybe 3 8 inch thick, maybe half inch thick backer rod. And some type of athletic tape. We have it here in black and white. The black looks a little cooler, a little more slick, especially if you have a darker coated dog. And some scissors. All right, now one of the things you wanna do before you even bring the dog out is get set up. That's an important part. Dog's gonna get frustrated, get bored. It's gonna be impossible to set up and keep the dog up on a table, which is what we recommend to save your back and kind of isolate the dog. But we'll show you that in just a minute. You wanna get this set up. So what we like to do is get the athletic tape, your scissors. You wanna go about four to six inches, give or take. So we're gonna go ahead and put 12 pieces out. You need about eight, but it's inevitable one or two just won't make it. So now you have your strips laid out, just kind of hanging there. And the next thing you wanna do is take your backer rod and you wanna maybe pre-measure this, but we need about one and a half to maybe two inches, depending upon the dog, go ahead and kind of measure it. So if the dog was here, I already have a rough idea. When in doubt, make it longer. You can always cut it short. So this is obviously a lot taller than his ears. His ears are only about this tall at the most, uh, but we need a little bit of extra to go down into the ear canal for the base. So this is oversized. Once you have these cut out to size, there's a very special trick I'm gonna show you. We call it making the taco meat. Now what you do is you take the athletic tape, pay close attention what I'm gonna do here. Start to wrap it, and as soon as you get like one revolution, spin it and go the other way so the sticky side is out. Now, as the sticky side is out, you wanna just go ahead and start wrapping all the way down very tightly so it's sticky all the way on the outside, and this is gonna be your taco meat. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute because the dog's ears are gonna be the tortilla, and we're gonna be making burritos. So that's one there. Put it somewhere that it's not gonna get uh, dirty or it's gonna lose its stickiness, sticking to everything. Okay, so we have our pieces laid out. We have our uh, little meat sticks, so to speak. We put those down. I brought out a healer's box, you saw that. It's just to help put the tape up and it might not be a bad spot to kind of isolate the dog. Let's bring the puppy out and let's get started. But one more thing before we do, I like to take the alcohol and spray my hands and that gets some of the oils off. So when I'm touching the tape, uh, my oils aren't making the tape less sticky. You'll find that's the hardest part of this is finding tape that is sticky enough. Uh, alcohol alcohol is gonna save your, your butt on this one. You'll see in a minute. All right, we're back with Mr. Achilles. Now I brought in coal. If you have a second hand, man, is it helpful? And if you have high value treats, now's the time to bring them out. Uh, right now we're just using like a dental stick. He likes it, we'll keep him happy. We take that alcohol and we're gonna spray, not in the dog's eyes or anywhere near their eyes, but I like to get the outside of the ears, the fur and on the inside. So he's not gonna like this much, but we're gonna keep him busy with some good stuff. This is where you bring out the high value treats. A little on the outside, rub them down with your hands, and then just a spray or two on the inside. And I like to take my thumb and get all down in there. Remember, we're not spraying into the ear canal. We're not spraying way down in there. No pressure like that. Just a little coating to remove the kind of wax and the oils so the tape will stick. Now you can either let it air dry. I just take it as a great opportunity to go ahead and clean those ears out. And we're just going to keep putting cotton balls down there until we get all the muck and gunk out. Now, if you don't have a helper, what you can do is just scatter food on the floor, which I'll try to do now and demonstrate. We'll just throw it there. Hopefully he gets his little butt in there and he can just kind of scavenge for food while I go ahead and clean his ears. Be careful when you touch that food, a lot of kibble is super greasy. Your hands will mess up the tape. So keep spraying it down. Keep your hands nice and dry. All right, now we're ready. So if we can have Cole lure him into this box or at least close to me, we already got some work in that box. If he doesn't want to be in the box, it's fine. If he wants to lay down, even better. Now we're going to take this. We're going to go ahead and stick it. Make sure you're dry. The alcohol's dried. And we're just going to stick that down in there. Not too deep 
deep, but we gotta get it down there a little bit. That's what she said. It's hard to explain, and this thing's probably blocking your view. We need to make sure that first wrap is super clean. I don't wanna fold the ear over on itself, and you can basically create a crease or a wrinkle in the ear, and you don't need to do this tight at all. It's like ah, barely finger tight. Go looser, because you can always go tighter later. So I got the first wrap, we're set. Now we need two or three more to kind of clean it up, provide a little more stability. We're gonna do the base, and we're gonna do the tip, and again, every time we're looking that we don't fold the ear, right? We want it nice and folded. We don't want the edges curled back on us. So that's wrap number two. We'll get the top. If if you go like six, eight, 12 inches long on the tape, you're gonna be doing this. We don't want that. I'll give just a little squeeze. If you do it too tight, you're gonna cut off circulation and we can't have that. The ear's gonna swell up with blood and it's gonna be extremely uncomfortable. All right, we're gonna do the same here. Cut this down just a little bit. If you if anything got hung up and you feel like, ah, oh, you know what? This is just not as sticky as it should be. T tape it again, no problem. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a second layer of tape, fresh tape that's a little stickier. And now again, that my hands have that alcohol on it, kind of missed that step in the beginning. All right, so we have the one ear taped. We're gonna go ahead and do what's called a mouth hold. There's like a little V under the jawbone. You put your two middle fingers right there, go over the top, almost like a handshake, and you hold them there. The more they pull, the more you squeeze, the more they chill, the more you chill. Easier said than done. You probably wanna work on mouth holds away from this whole experience and you simply hold their mouth they do good you mark and you pay and you let them know hey when I hold your mouth all that means is food's coming so hang tight and love that he's doing very nice with it so we're gonna go ahead and do a mouth hold now and uh, get this second tape in so if you can mouth hold them please and we'll do it as quick as we can now you see the the reason we need to be set up so we can make this as fast as possible puppies have you know little to no attention span he's bored he says get me off this table I'd rather go chase things outside than be stuck on this table gentle mouth hold we've practiced this before this is not his first ear taping and he understands not to buck the system so to speak and look how fast we're getting that done it's beautiful when in doubt you can't go wrong with more tape again don't crank it down we don't want to crank it down we just want to cover as much surface area as we can and another important part never close off the hole there into their ear right I don't want to tape over that because you can get moisture built up in there all kinds of stuff always leave some room for some air to travel now I can see right where the tip of the ear is we cover that with our thumb and then we go ahead and snip, all right? Mazel tov. All right, so the next one's here. I can see his ear tip there, a little bit of black, cover that. Hey, and when in doubt, leave it a little long. Never, ever, ever cut the tip of your dog's ear off. We don't want that. And now he's pretty set. You can also come in and, and bend the back a rod a little bit to the shape that you feel that you need. So we like to sit and see what the ears are doing. They were folding in, so I don't mind if they're kicking out a little bit. But if they were kicking out and I wanted them up, I can bridge them like such. I'll put a little taco stick, so to speak, here, and then we just add some tape to tape the ears, not together, but so that they're standing up nice and pretty, uh, so that when we're all said and done, his ears or where we want them to be. I like to leave the tape on for two to three days maximum, then one to two days off. Two to three days on, one to two days off. With the Dobermans, they may need longer on. Three, four, five days on, one day off. Some people don't even give a gap. I like to give it a little gap, those ears to breathe, uh, to let that skin kind of relax and get some fresh air and sunshine, and then we put it back on. And that's all she wrote. Uh, keep, keep an eye on these. We don't want the dogs to rip them off, chew them off. If they do, they can eat them. So sometimes putting a cone on is helpful. And like I said, I think the secret to success is having a helper, being pre-set up, and having some cool treats on standby to keep your puppy happy. And now we're taped up. All right, hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment below. If you have any other tips, secrets that you wanna uh, post to share with the community at large, thank you to Cole, and uh, thank you to you all. See you in the next one.